Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in the book of 2 Corinthians. In my opinion, and you don't have to share that opinion, but one of the, the highlights of the book of 2 Corinthians is chapter 4. Now, in that passage later, at toward the end of the, of the chapter, he talks about, Paul talks about, that is, that our outer man is decaying, but our inner man is being renewed. And what a great comfort that is for most of us. But the focus that I want to bring today actually happens in the first part of this particular chapter. In, in, in verses 1 and, one and following, uh, uh, 2 and 3, the idea here is that Paul is saying that we as, as people who are proclaiming the word of God must do so conscientiously. One of the translations talks about how we don't peddle the word of God. It is not something that we become mercenaries about. Now, it's not wrong for you to pay the preacher. It's not wrong for us to uh, buy books and, uh, and, and for people to earn their living in this way. But, but this is not a mercenary endeavor. The people who truly are following what Jesus calls us to do and what Paul gives us an example of are those who do this because of, of a transformed heart, those who have earnestly followed him. Now, it's not just in chapter 4. It actually begins in chapter 3. And in there, Paul talks about that, the, that this ministry is something that is a very, very profound one, likened unto the ministry that Moses had when he came down from the mountain and they had to veil his face. And we are who are who are proclaiming God's word, whether we're professionals, whether we are ordained, whether we are lay people simply proclaiming the gospel to the people around us. We are ones who are not to do so in a way that simply tries and elicits the, um, tries to get people to make some kind of outward response. That's not our goal. What our goal is, is a transformed heart. That we would be faithful to proclaim so that the Holy Spirit has a way of working in the people's hearts. This is how Paul says it. Having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways we refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. That's the way that we are to proclaim Christ in this generation. And yet we recognize that there are many who are mercenary, many who are in it just for just so that they can get rich. You've heard of the health, wealth, and prosperity gospel that is so prevalent in our world today. But the Apostle Paul was saying that that's not what we're to do. We are to commend this book and this truth to every man's conscience. Yes, the next chapter says, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. But our persuasion is not simply to, to turn them, to get them to raise their hand to the evangelist. Our persuasion is that they would embrace the gospel of Jesus, that they would embrace internally that Jesus is their Lord and that they can turn and find peace and hope in him. That's not often done these days, I'm sorry to say. But that's what the apostle wants us to do. That's why he says we've renounced disgraceful ways. We're not peddling the word of God, or as this translation says, tampering with it. But we commend ourselves to every man's conscience. Back in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55 there is a fascinating but encouraging verse where, 
where Isaiah writes, does the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be. It will go forth from my mouth and it will not return empty. The idea is that as we commend the scripture to every man's conscience, it allows the Holy Spirit to do his work. He may not actually be working in the same, on the same timetable that you and I have, but he is working there. We have our own timetables. We want our loved ones and our friends to embrace this that we have. And, and certainly he wants that also, but he wants them to do it freely. And he is at work if we'll be faithful to proclaim his word in the right way. And so I urge you, proclaim Jesus commending his word and his truth to the consciences of those that we meet. Father, we ask you to grant to us the grace to do this. It does take grace, and we do want to persuade people to come to know you. But we ask that we would simply uh, offer the arguments and leave the results to the Holy Spirit. So minister to our friends and family and use us in this way. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day now.